Welcome back everyone, Greg Diamond here, editor of Headstock Trader, uh, another edition of Diamond's Edge video. And this week I want to talk about the bull setup in stocks. Um, you know, we saw a little bit of volatility last week, but the, the bull setup in terms of what I'm going to show you tells me that there's more upside uh, potential than, you know, any downside. And if we do see downside, it's probably a buying opportunity. So I'm going to show, start first with um, Russell 2000. <clears throat> which sometimes would be overlooked um, in favor of obviously semiconductors, NASDAQ, S&P, and Dow. <clears throat> Dow does industrial average. But the setup that I like here, and this is a starting here um, in this chart, and I'll zoom in for you. Um, you know, this was back in early May. We were, I was looking at this potential setup uh, in terms of a big wave one, wave two low in the Russell 2000. And it looks like we got that last week with a nice bounce. So, you know, if we start, we, we keep seeing this strength, maybe a little bit of a pullback, you know, this red line is a uh, situation where, you know, we can see this happening all the way into to July, maybe even August. Uh, so this is something I'm going to be focused on a lot in terms of trading over the next, uh, probably this week, if not next. Um, and this week is going to be important. Friday is probably going to be the most important thing in terms of the payroll number. So maybe we don't get a ton of action, um, but you know, regardless of whether it's, you know, earlier this week, Friday, or then pro possibly early next week, depending on what the number is, this looks like something that I would start buying. Okay. Um, I also want to show you, so let's, let's look at the NASDAQ last week and we saw a really sharp drop and these are the, in the futures markets. Okay. We saw really this sharp drop we saw last week. Okay. Huge, big drop and it came right back. That's a sign of a strong bull market. Okay. That's a sign of Sellers not be able to take control and bulls are still in control. All right. So that's something um, that really caught my eye and said, you know what, you know, bulls, bulls still have, have uh, this market <clears throat> in their grasp. And I saw an article last week or maybe, or maybe uh, I think it was this weekend actually that, um, you know, hedge funds shorted the most tech um, in a while. Uh, so they're going to be forced to cover a little bit this morning. All right. Again, that leads to more bullish upside. All right. Here's another chart of Europe, actually, and this is um, something that I've been following for a while. Okay, this is this is the Euro stocks 50 index, and you know even though I don't trade it, I still want to see what's going on overseas because um, you know global markets are interconnected, so you have to focus on other things and not just you know what's happening in your own country. All right, so here you can see a clear one, two, three, four, and I have this other possible wave four that was last week. But what I want to show you. And I've outlined this chart before, but so this correction um, back in December of last year into January of this year was 21 days and dropped about 4.62%. All right. So I was trying to see there's usually it's either an equality of a correction or it tends to be a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, but there's some relationship to what these corrections can do. And I think this is a pretty good example of it. All right. So back in um, April, to May, I kind of did the same thing. All right. This was 21 days, as you can see. And then we had a nice little bump. All right. And that dropped about four and a half percent. Very, very similar. Now, is it possible that this is just still a larger correction? Sure. But look what's really neat about this. So 21 days versus 42 days. Exact. Um, uh, so just double it up. And, you know, that ended last week. And now we have this rally. Now, even if it comes back down in here, you know, um, say into Friday, the payrolls or whatever might have you. This still has, let me delete this, um, some of these lines, because I just want to show you, this doesn't have a top pattern to it. It's just working off overbought levels. And as you can see, as of last week on this RSI down here in this red dash line, this dropped right to where, you know, previous lows were on this index. Okay, you can see the composite index at the very bottom of the chart is sloping up just like it did here, here, and here. So again, when I look at Europe, um, this looks bullish to me. We saw the big reversal in NASDAQ. I outlined, um, the small caps. Now let me, uh, focus on bonds. All right. And this is something that I covered last week or last, well, I've been focusing on, focusing on it for a while. Uh, this is the interest rates. Okay. And this was the chart that I had had last week. Hey, you know, possibly we get a pop here. Um, but watch for a drop. All right. And now I made a trade off of this last week, uh, for 10 stock trader subscribers <clears throat> and basically what we're looking at here, you know, it, it tried to rally above this resistance. It did, but completely reverse lower. So we'll see how this fit, this plays out, um, into the Friday jobs number. But basically if I see, 
something like this where uh, we get, you know, maybe maybe it drops back down to this line and then we get a reversal and then we drop. Oh, watch out for that because that's a big move both in bonds, interest rates, obviously. But this would be a big move in stocks to see, you know, especially in uh, IWM, uh, the iShares Russell 2000, you know, that scenario that I outlined. If, if it looks similar to this in bonds, that's really going to be a great trade to make. So simple message. I'm still bullish. Um, and we're seeing that from Europe to bonds uh, to different sectors in the U.S. All right. Thanks. And I'll see you next week. <music>